mission in the Red Sea. Let's bring in Shadow Defence Minister Andrew Hastie now. Thanks for your time. What's your reaction to this confirmation now, Andrew Hastie, from Richard Miles that we'll be sending more personnel, a tripling of our personnel at the headquarters in Bahrain, but not a vessel? Good afternoon, Kieran. Well, this is a bad decision by the Albanese government. It's a weak decision, and Richard Miles has his head under the doona because we are a trading nation. We are the fifth largest user of shipping in the world. 99% of our imports and exports by volume come across the sea. So we absolutely have an interest in keeping the sea lanes in the Red Sea open, and to not send a vessel is to actually break with the last 30 years. Since 1990, we've had 57 Royal Australian Navy vessels contribute to stability, peacekeeping, uh, counterterrorism and counterpiracy operations either in the Middle East or off the Horn of Africa. And so uh, this decision needs to be reversed because we're leaving our allies in the lurch. And this may well have cost of living implications for the Australian people as well. Because if those cargo vessels have to go around the Cape of Good Hope rather than through the Suez Canal, that'll add up to 10 days more transit time, which adds to the cost of fuel, the cost of operations, which will in turn be passed on to Australian consumers who are already battling with inflation as it is. Have you seen the request from the United States? My understanding is that it was a broad request either for vessel, a, a, a vessel, aircraft or personnel. So isn't the government still responding positively to that request by providing and tripling the number of personnel on the ground there? They have taken the path of least resistance, Kieran. That's what they've done. They're sending sick people to Operation Prosperity Garden to be staged in Bahrain, in Bahrain, where the real work is going to take place in the Red Seas, along with other naval contributions. The UK, for example, is sending a destroyer. The French are sending a frigate. Um, we've always stepped up over the last 100 years when we've had to, to be a good global citizen, to uphold uh, the global rules-based order. And the Prime Minister has squibbed this. It's a weak decision, and that's why we're calling on him to reverse it, because it's in our national interest to contribute. If we want others to help us in a time of need, we need to step up and reciprocate now. So, so you're saying the government uh, should reverse it, send a, a ship to the Red Sea. What's your, your view, though, of this argument from the, the Deputy Prime Minister, where he says that we need to be focused on our region? That Strategic Defence Review said that we need to focus, zero in on the concerns and, as he puts it, do the heavy lifting in this part of the world. That's an academic argument from Richard Miles. It's not an argument based in reality. It's not an argument based in our strategic reality, and that is we are an island nation. We're the fifth largest user of shipping in the world. Two thirds of our imports come through the Suez Canal and Red Sea from the Mediterranean. So we absolutely have an interest in keeping that open and keeping the Houthi rebels backed by Iran uh, away from that area and stopping their missile and their drone attacks on commercial shipping. Uh, to do otherwise is to put the head over the doona and just say, no, we're going to focus on the near region, which is frankly a cop-out. I think the Australian people are smart enough to realise that that is a cop-out. Didn't Linda Reynolds, though, when the coalition was last in government, and announced that Australia would reduce its presence, its naval presence in the Middle East? Well, that was a decision taken at the time. But since then, we've had the Hamas attacks on October 7th, uh, conducted against innocent Israelis, more than 1,200 people murdered. Uh, we've got the Houthi rebels backed by Iran attacking commercial shipping. And this is a a growing strategic disorder in the Middle East and it's concentrated in the Red Sea and it affects not just our security but also our prosperity. So I think the government absolutely has an interest in stepping up and contributing to this multinational coalition as part of Operation Prosperity Garden. We've got to deal with the situation as we find it, not as we wish it to be. And um, we have precedent that the last 30 years we've contributed 57 vessels to operations. So we have strong muscle memory, uh, but this government's been weak. And, and that's fundamentally uh, what's going on here. Anthony Albanese's instincts are all at sea. He can't make a right call on Hamas. He can't make a right call on China. And he's squibbed this call in the Red Sea as well.
I want to play you a little of uh, my discussion with Richard Miles where I asked him about the fact that we've got this decision just after Australia backed the call for a ceasefire at the UN, going against the US position there as well. Have a, a quick look at what he had to say. Will some in Washington be concerned? Uh, no, the United Kingdom abstained and even the United States has, has made clear its concerns publicly around the humanitarian situation. And we really do need to see that in the context of this, uh, this request that's been made, not just to us, but to uh, a coalition of, of you know, more than 30 countries, um, we are making a contribution which is significant, which is commensurate with our size and our place in the world. Andrew Hasty, he says the US and, our, and those in Washington won't be concerned. I guess you, you disagree with that assessment? I disagree with that assessment. The, U the U United Kingdom at least had the decency to abstain from the vote, whereas we backed a vote calling for a ceasefire that didn't even condemn Hamas. And the Papua New, Guinea, Papua New Guineans, they voted against it. Um, there are a number of countries that either abstained or voted against it. Australia should have been among those countries. Um, and so I, I just I disagree fundamentally with Richard Miles's assessment of that. I think it diminishes us and what we really need is, is moral clarity. And when a, when a motion doesn't have uh, the moral clarity to condemn Hamas, I question why we'd support it. Are you worried about the, the capability question? Uh, the Deputy Prime Minister says this call has not been made due to any lack of naval capability. It's been made on a strategic assessment of where our assets should be. Are you, are you worried, though, that underpinning that, there could be a question as to whether the Navy's up to it? I am concerned about our ANZAC uh, class and our Hobart class uh, vessels. I'm worried about our personnel and the separation rate from the ADF at the moment, which is too high. It needs to come down below 10 per cent, around the 7 and 8 per cent mark. It's been up at around 11 per cent. Um, so I, do, I am worried that there is a capability question. I'm also concerned about the ability of the Royal Australian Navy to defend itself against the emerging technologies that we're seeing in the Red Sea. Uh, the Houthi rebels are using drones and missiles. And the question is for the government to answer, can our Navy actually defend themselves against such a threat? And if they can't, then what are they doing to rectify uh, that gap in our capability. This is where the Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister should be leading. They should be picking up the phone to defence industry and asking for options on the table. But what we've seen since the Defence Strategic Review was released in April, we've seen dithering, we've seen uh, money being stripped out of the defence budget and we've seen cuts to capability. And that's at the heart of uh, this government's national security policy. It's weak and it's not good enough. I want to ask you about this as well, this comment from Richard Miles on the Global Mail, the Chinese-owned, uh, the Communist Party run daily. Uh, they complimented the Australian position when it comes to the Red Sea and on the ceasefire. This was Richard Miles' reaction. is being said, but it has absolutely no relationship to the decisions that we make. And I can tell you um, that, that, you know, our consultations are with a lot of countries. It ain't with China. Our consultations are with the United States first and foremost and with our like-minded partners. There you go. Richard Miles says he's not concerned about what China and the Global Mail is saying. Are they just in uh, simple terms, trying to mess with our heads at the moment, Andrew Haste. Once again, I think the Deputy Prime Minister had his, has his head under the doona. Uh, the Global Times is a mouthpiece used by the Chinese Communist Party and they're effectively endorsing our position on the call for a ceasefire and also for our uh, decision not to deploy a vessel to the Red Sea. This is classic divide and conquer tactics. They are trying to put a, a wedge between us and the United States and other partners uh, who we depend on for our, our security. So I think it is concerning, and I should also note, in that article in the Global Times, they also run cover for uh, the Houthi rebels, basically saying they're not doing any damage to commercial shipping. So any sort of endorsement from that paper is, is not one that you want, um, and I think that's a problem for the government. And, and just one before you go, residents in parts of uh, Parkerville, this is in East Perth, we've got some live pictures now, um, and I'm told... 
Uh, news into the uh, the newsroom that the bushfire is burning dangerously close to homes in Perth's east. It looks like uh, some difficult conditions over there today, Andrew Hasty. Yes, Kieran, it's it's very warm. It's it's there's been a strong easterly wind. Um, you might be able to pick it up. And um, those two things combined together can make it very, very difficult to fight fires. So uh, our thoughts and prayers are with the firefighters, the volunteers and those affected. And we hope that we can get on top of this very, very quickly. Yeah, it's looking uh, precarious there for a few of those properties. Andrew Hasty, thanks. We wish you and your family all the very best for Christmas and uh, the new year. We'll see you next year. Thanks, Kieran. Good to be with you. Merry Christmas.